What's up everyone, back for another beer review and today I'll be reviewing yet another beer from the Upland Brewing Company and they're out of Bloomington, Indiana and this is their Bourbon Barrel Age Teddy Bear Kisses, the Orange Zest variant and this is the 2019 vintage. So this is a Russian Imperial Stout that is aged on both cacao nibs and orange zest then aged in bourbon barrels. It comes in at 11% alcohol by volume. No IBUs this in time of review. This can is just under nine months old. I want to give a huge thanks and shout out once again to a very good friend of mine and viewer of the channel, Todd. So thank you very much, Todd. I'll post a link in the description box to the beer mail unboxing video I did that contains all the goodies that Todd hooked me up with. And uh, he hooked me up with four of these back oh, late last year, I believe. And I've been sitting on them for a while. It might have been earlier this year. I don't exactly remember. Uh, but these were canned in late October. So it's it's been almost nine months. And uh, he sent me four different uh, teddy bear kisses. He sent me the uh, base one, which is just a Russian Imperial Stout that is Asian cacao, uh, cacao nibs. Then he sent me the barrel aged version of that beer. Then he sent me this one and the coconut bourbon barrel aged uh, variant. So um, let me just say that the base of this beer is fantastic. I really liked just the regular teddy bear kisses. The barrel aged one was just as good. I actually said, I think in that one, uh, that review, I just want to try the Russian Imperial Stout without any cacao nibs or barrel aging or anything. I'd really like to just see the base, see how good it is. Now this one, Sounds like it might be right in my wheelhouse. They're kind of going for like an orange chocolate kind of uh, thing here. Uh, and I think it's going to be more of like a uh, dark chocolate or like an orange dark chocolate. And when it comes to me, I love dark chocolate more than milk chocolate, more than really any chocolate. Uh, when you, you know, those uh, Terry uh, Terry's orange chocolate um you know, the balls that you can get that you smash on the table. Uh, I always buy the dark chocolate version because that's what I like. And I feel like this one's going to be right in that wheelhouse, of course, burn barrel age. But I'm really excited about this one. Uh, the coconut one's obviously going to be the one that I'm looking forward to the most because I'm a coconut fiend. But I'd be lying if I said this one kind of didn't pique my interest. Now, the thing I want to say about this one is that, um, again, nine months old, so I'm hoping the orange zest holds up. But we do have hashtag proper glassware, so let's give it a pour. Yeah, now all these have poured out like more uh, motor oil, like they're super thick and viscous looking. Um, good friend of mine and fellow beer tuber, Paul over at PA Brew News. I don't think he'd be disappointed in the bodies or the looks of these beers. It could be wrong, but knowing Paul, I think he would enjoy them. Anyway, that pours out super dark, deep dark uh, black color. Uh, the has about a finger of this dark brown, uh, creamy colored head. Um, yeah, plays the role. Looks like a Russian Imperial Stout. Plain and simple, just like the other ones, very similar. Oh, that, <clears throat> that barrel is very pronounced in this one. And then you get the orange. It's kind of weird. But man, the barrel on this one and just the beer in general is really heavily uh, like burnt sugar, like caramel toffee, molasses, just like real like thick, viscous kind of sugar component to it. It's not like just, you know, table sugar or something. There's vanilla. There's dark fruits. There's a little bit of like a, I was going to say licorice, but yeah, a little bit of licorice, anise, kind of stuff like that. Or anise. Anise? The, the orange is there, but it's underlying. Um, the chocolate is definitely there as well, but I feel like the chocolate and the orange is not being represented... It's not a true representation of like what it says on the actual label as, as far as the aroma goes because the cacao and the orange zest are getting kind of lost. Like the barrel's kind of dominating and just like sweet, sugary, like dark sugar, like, you know, burnt sugar is kind of leading the way. It smells really fucking good though. Like it, it doesn't smell like an orange, a dark orange chocolate uh, bar or something in, in beer form, but it smells really good. There's like this roasty, almost charred kind of note. Could be from the barrel. Could just be from the, the stout itself. A little bit of coffee. Yeah, the, the, the orange zest is just kind of accentuating certain parts of it. But it, 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 kind of is, it kind of feels misplaced and kind of lost in the nose. Like it, it doesn't fit as well as I want it to just because... There's not a ton of chocolate in the nose, so the orange is not working as well with those other flavors. Um, but it still smells pretty damn good. So let's get into it. Cheers, everybody, and thanks again, Todd. That's cool. Way different. Way different on the palate. Couple things. Number one, I forgot to mention that this has been out of the fridge for almost an hour. Probably talking 55, 60 degrees down here at this point. So perfect drinking temperature for a beer like this, for me anyway. 
you know, not, not even room temperature, just a little bit cooler than that. But I think it's perfect for what I want. First things first, this is the most boozy of the three that I've had. It's substantially boozy to my palate. Into the nostrils, <laughs> there's, there's booze. On the palate, there's booze. A little bit boozy for me. Body on this one, really nice. Lower side of a full to medium full. Like, not super viscous, but definitely hefty. I would say it drinks more like a 10% beer, so at 11%, I think that's fine. It could be a touch thin. Shout out to the aforementioned Paul, but I think for the most part, it's fine. I don't think anybody's going to drink this one and be like, oh, it's super thin. Might be a touch thin, but at the end of the day, I think it's fine. The mouthfeel, it's soft, it's smooth, it has creaminess to it. it. There is carbonation here, but it's lightly carbonated. Like, there's a softness to the beer that... I think I think the body and mouthfeel are good. I really do. The taste. There's a lot of booze, and it's hard to get past that, honestly. The other two did not have this much booze. It hadn't, they had booze, especially the bourbon barrel agent one, I think, was a little bit boozier than the base. But this one... A lot of booze. As I get past that and start acclimating it, my palate to the you know the booze and whatnot. Right up front, there's a bitterness to me. There's um, this like roasted. There's like a kind of a roasted malt. Like like there's like a coffee bitterness as well. Right in front of the palate, passes through. There's an earthiness that kind of hits me mid palate. But then right after the mid palate is where like a lot. It's weird because more more often than not, when it comes to beers, like I get my palate anyway, I get a lot of sweetness up front and then bitterness hits on the back end. And then, you know, other, other things like if, if it's a sour beer, like the acidity hits, um, you get the dryness and whatnot for this one though, it's opposite. Like right up front, there's a lot of bitterness. Um, there's earthiness, but middle of the palate, that's where like a deeper, darker, like 40, 50, 60% cacao bar kind of hits. And that kind of transitions it into sweet because that, you know, like if you've ever had a 50 or 60% cacao bar, it has a very slight sweetness, but it's mostly just like chocolate flavor, a little bit bittering. Um, as you get higher, obviously, uh, it gets less sweet and more bitter. This is like a 50, 50 percent, 60% cacao bar right in the middle of the palate. And then right after that, the 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 uh, barrel hits, there's vanilla, there's an oak, like tannin kind of dryness as well. I, I like this beer, but it's... Gotta be honest, it's kind of disjointed in my palate. I'm like, I, I'm sitting here trying to describe it to you, and I'm like, what am I? Let, let me go back and taste and just like kind of refer, like uh, refine what I'm exactly tasting. Yeah, so right up front, now it fucking changed on me. I don't know what I'm tasting. Fuck my life. I don't know what I'm tasting. Why is anybody watching this channel? Because I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. No, uh, <laughs> that's that that sip right there. I got the orange zest right on the tip of the tongue. And again, I think that follows in line with kind of the bitterness and the stuff up front. It's not like a candied uh, orange peel or something. It's just like orange zest, uh, orange pith right at the front of the palate. But all the rest of the stuff makes sense. We'll go back to the middle of the palate where that, that cacao bar hit. After that vanilla oak tannin, there is that sweet sugary, like caramelized sugar, straight up caramel toffee. Um, I, I feel like if it was reversed, I'd enjoy it more. If all that sweetness, like the barrel hit first, the uh, the chocolate and everything hit first, and then the rest of the stuff hit me on the back of the palate. I think I'd enjoy it more. I don't know if my palate's broken. What's going on with this beer? I, maybe I'm maybe I'm shook. I'm shook because of the booziness. I don't know what it is, but this one isn't hitting as well as the rest. It finishes semi bitter, semi sweet. Kind of the, you know they kind of play off each other quite well. Um, it has a, a semi-dry finish. So everything's like a little bit. There's a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of dryness, a little bit of bitterness. But I think it still leans a little bit more bitter and, and uh, dry than sweet. 11%, it, you know, tasting it, smelling it, it definitely, it drinks like 11% Russian Imperial South this barrel age for sure. I wish the barrel was a little bit more pronounced. I wish it was a little bit more oomph and more characters from it. feel like the base Russian Imperial Stouts kind of come to the forefront, but it's coming to the forefront without the greatness that was the base beer. Like, that base beer was great. I mean, it had the roasty, roasty malt character, the roasted malt characters, the char, but then it had the coconut, it had or the, the, the cacao uh, nibs, it had sweetness to it. it. It was really well balanced. This one's kind of disjointed. It's not bad at all. Like, I'm going to drink the rest of this, and I'm going to enjoy it to some degree. I just think it's kind of disjointed from what I'm looking for. I like the base. I like the barrel age. This one, not as good as those. So I'm going to give Bourbon Barrel Age Teddy Bear Kisses, the Orange Zest variant, the 2019 vintage. 
I think I gave those other ones like in the 4-2, 4-2-5. I can't, I can't do that for this one. I gotta, I gotta keep it 100, um, as the kids would say. And I don't even know if the kids say that anymore. Apparently it's something else at this point because I'm old. I don't know. I don't keep up with shit. Uh, I'm gonna have to give this one, I gotta keep it honest, right? Low 3.75 out of 5, I'm gonna go 3.65 out of 5. It's, it is what it is. It's not a bad beer. I'm gonna drink the rest of it. I just think for what I was hoping this beer was gonna be, what, what I was picturing in my head when I, you know, when he sent it my way and I was thinking about it, I'm thinking Terry's, uh, you know, orange chocolate ball, uh, dark, dark chocolate, um, and in, in beer form, it's bourbon barrel age. I think I just thought it would all play well. Now it could be the age. I mean, this is almost nine months. could be a lot of things, right? But at the end of the day, what I'm drinking right now in my glass, it's a 3.65 out of five. The, the base is superior to this one. The bourbon barrel age base is superior to this one. I hope the coconut is much better than this one because this is kind of a miss for what I want this beer to be. But still, at the end of the day, I appreciate Todd sending this one my way because these are so fun to try. Uh, price and availability. I don't know the avail availability on uh, these. Todd, you want to chime in? I think Todd sent in the other one that he picked up at his local bottle shop. He picked up a four-pack of them, one of each. And I think he said, we'll go with the price point, I think he said there were $16.99 a four-pack. So if you're telling me this uh, can is $4.25 to try, for sure. 11% barrel age with orange zest. Yeah, $4.25 for this can. Well worth it. Um, would I buy this again at 425 a can? No, because it's a 3.65 out of 5. I don't buy really any bears around that unless, you know, it's something that's absurd. Like, you know, Jenny Cream Ale or whatever. It's like a 3.5 out of 5 or whatever I, I, I gave it. I buy Jenny Cream Ale at that rate because Jenny Cream Ale is less than a dollar a can. But 425 for this one at 3.65 out of 5? No, nah, I wouldn't do it. Um, I do appreciate, again, Todd sending this one uh, my way, the chance to try it and I reviewing it. But it kind of fucked with my palate. And as you can see, I struggled to kind of, um, you know, let you guys know what I think about it or how my palate was reacting to it. And I did it in a poor way, like most of my reviews, but, uh, I know this is gonna be a longer review. I know I'm rambling a little bit, but, uh, you know, I just want to give you guys my honest assessment of this one. And it's a 3.6 out of five, uh, 3.65 out of five. I'm not going to go 3.6, 3.65 out of 5. So uh, if you've had this one before or any of the Teddy Bear Kisses, let me know what you think about it. Thanks again to Todd at sending this one my way. And thanks to everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. Truly appreciate everybody watching and subscribing the whole nine. This is so much fun. I'm having a ball. And uh, I'm going to go drink the rest of this off camera. I'm hoping that, you know, maybe it just opens up a little bit more in terms of something great. Uh, I doubt it. But at the end of the you know what? Let me pour it. You know, before I go, let me just pour the rest of it in here and see if anything. I don't think, you know, this isn't... It's like a fruit smoothie beer or something crazy where all the goodies are at the end and all of a sudden this is going to be an amazing beer. At least I don't think so. But uh, we're going to give it one more sip. Let's try it. Mm. No, the one thing I've noticed, though, is each subsequent uh, sip that I take after the first couple, that orange zest hits at the tip of the tongue. So the orange zest is definitely present, just not in the way that I prefer. So anyway, appreciate everybody's on by to the next one. Cheers.